Hear ye, hear ye. Parenting advice from the 1910s. Hi, I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Vestia. Hi, I'm Harold. Hi, I'm Helen. And today we're reacting to parenting advice from the 1910s. I think parenting has gotten a lot more involved since the 1910s. I definitely think there's a lot of medical advancements. I don't know what kind of tools they were using on kids back then, but that's gotta be scary. Just like, <laughs> scaffolding it up. World War One. Yeah, that was there. Mm. The clothing was very stiff. Also thinking if, if it's parenting, then it's like not very many manuals. There's definitely a lot more information now. How to not die from chicken pox and the common cold. I'm ready to see if there's any old jewels that could be dug up. I can apply it right when I get home. You ready for these 1910s? Or All right, what? bring on the 1910s. Playing with the baby. The rule that parents should not play with the baby may seem hard, but it is without doubt a safe one. It is a great pleasure to hear the baby laugh and crow in a parent delight. But often the means used to produce the laughter, such as tickling, punching, or tossing, makes him irritable and restless. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, that part is right. I yeah. think so. I mean, why are we even suggesting right. that? Right, <laughs> but don't make the baby laugh too much. That's so sad. That's so sad. I think that's one of the best things is hearing that first belly laugh mm -hmm. from your baby. It's like the greatest thing on the planet. It is a regrettable fact that the few minutes of play that the father has when he gets home at night may result in nervous disturbance of the baby and upset his regular habits. All babies need mothering and should have plenty of it. When the young baby is awake, he should frequently be taken up and held quietly in the mother's arms in a variety of positions so that no one set of muscles may become overtired. Now, first off, and all of these, they keep saying he. What happened to the she's? See, misogyny. I, I said I said it. <laughs> I yep, said it? I get it. It's definitely painting the picture of the 1910s home life. The mom is conserving her energy, not trying to, you know, work those muscles too hard, you know, not any specific group of muscles. The dads only get a few minutes with the child when they get home. Don't tickle them. Don't tickle them too much. Just kind of. <laughs> Leave them alone. Petticoats. Lightweight part wool flannel may be used for the petticoats, which for very young babies should not extend more than 10 inches below the feet. They may be made by the princess or Gertrude model if warmth is desired, but for summer they should be made with a cotton waist. Petticoats should always hang from the shoulders. Is that like a cape? Those are like those thick, um, Coat. Coats, but it's it's like it's thicker than a trench coat. So like a cape, like a little Red Riding Hood cape. Okay, we could go with that. Is that what it is? Okay, I'm pretty sure that's. Yeah, we could go with that. Otherwise, I don't know what a petticoat is. Or we could be wrong. It goes like under the clothes. Oh. oh. Never mind. Great. So it's like a slip. I still don't like it. So though. it's like a slip. Yes. Oh well, no, this is advice though. This is saying this is what we think. No, if this is 1910, they're making sure that you know if you don't have these, you are beneath everybody else. Yep. That's not advice. That's if you want to be with the status quo and you want to keep up with the Joneses, you know what to follow. 1910, <laughs> you're annoying. Diapers. The diaper is by far the most troublesome part of the baby's outfit. The ordinary diaper is hot and clumsy, not to speak of the objectionable odor which clings so persistently to it. There is evidence to show that a wad of thick material between the legs may deform the thighs to some extent. Besides, unless the diaper is most carefully washed with soap that contains nothing to irritate the skin, is thoroughly rinsed and well dried in the open air, there is danger that the baby's flesh may become chafed and sore. Yeah, these are the OG diapers right yeah. here. I mean, I have some friends that still use, They're still use them. cloth diapers today. It's like vinyl is coming back. You know? <laughs> with a cloth diaper, especially back in the day, yeah. that's gonna leak all over your couch. Like you're gonna stink up the whole place. When not to take the baby out. When the weather is very cold, when the snow is melting, or when there is a heavy storm in progress, or a high wind blowing quantities of dust about, it will be best to give the baby his airing indoors or on a protected porch. Dress him as for going out, open all the windows wide, and let him remain in the fresh air for some time. 
It's a baby, not a porcelain doll. <laughs> it's very specific for the regions, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't account for the fact that there are people who live in different kind of environments. Am I crazy? I mean, I'm crazy, but. <laughs> this whole thing, it just felt more so like, Oh, your baby can't do this. Your baby can't do that. Your baby can't do this. And it's like, by the time you have your, like, your second kid, you're like, oh, all the stuff that you guys told me not to do is mm. perfectly fine. And it's right. building their, you know, their immune, immune system. systems. Based off of the parenting advice from the 1910s, I think we can see that throughout the decades, we're kind of just all trying to figure it out. And my one piece of advice would be to just trust your gut you know, you know your child the best and just make sure you keep them happy. I think hundreds of years from now, they will see that millennials are the best parents of all time. <laughs> We're holding it down, hold on, hold on. Right, right.